Today, we're looking at a purple ink by Sailor, Sweet Potato. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. And if you like videos like that, I would invite you to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram, and there's timestamps down below, so that if you are in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this Tasha Spectrum with a music nib, wrote with it for the day, and used it to take my notes for this video. For the first writing sample, I use Claire Fontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. There are additional writing samples later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, so it comes in a vial that looks something like this. And to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter, quite a bit lighter than the stub. It has no feather spread, halo, sheen, or shade. Nine seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo, sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't really show us any color variation, and we're not getting it. Tomoy River has no bleeding, no ghosting. That spot on the scrubby, I'm scratching through the page there. The 1.1, sorry. No bleeding, normal Tomway River ghosting. The 1.1 is no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 21 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation because there is none. And Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is just slightly lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 12 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both are showing us no color variation, and we're not getting any. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10-15 seconds. And what we see is this very nice purple across the bottom and it transitions its way out and we start seeing this magenta showing up which starts light and gets much darker. Now the one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. That purple is really getting into the filter paper on the bottom. It's really forming a line and it's not traveling very far. There's actually a line showing right where that purple ends. Now the magenta pushes its way up, but really interesting for this one is the orange that we see coming through on the right side that we didn't see in the original chromatography. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and how hard it may be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before I test it. Looking at the highlighter, we see that there's a lot of feathering, little feathering that occurs. It's not completely blown out and unreadable, which means you could use it in a note-taking situation. Water is lifting the magenta, but not the purple. That purple is still very much there and not budging. Now, pen flush is starting to break up that purple, and you see that because some of the purple and the magenta are mixing as they're being broken up to be removed, but it has not completely removed it from the paper yet, although I didn't have any trouble getting any of these inks out of my pen. The one-third bleach solution, as you would expect, completely obliterates it, taking it off the page, but you shouldn't need a one-third bleach solution to get this out of your pen. I test for viscosity or flow using a thing called a tilt test. I will link how I do that, the video of it, down below or up in the cards. I also then put it onto a standard distribution so it's more easily seen with all of the inks that I've tested. Now, for the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Sailor's Sweet Potato has a viscosity of 1.38, making this a very wet ink. 
To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Sailor's Sweet Potato has an average dry time of 14 seconds, making its dry time normal. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Sweet Potato, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. And I didn't want to draw any attention away from this very nice looking purple, so I went with a black. I went with Private Reserve's Velvet Black. The second writing sample is done on Levenger, P. Berger, and White Lines paper. Here we're looking at Levenger paper. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Now the extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and seven seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 10 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get it. P. Berger, this is a student grade French ruled paper it is not the highest quality in production, although it usually does fairly okay. We get a lot of bleed through. It does spot on the page underneath, so it does make its way through. The back of the page is unusable, even with the extra fine. The 1.1 has some feathering. You see some feathering going on in the I to L, O of Sailor, so it does feather some, but not incredibly out of control, not so much that you can't read what's there. No spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub. It has no feather spread, halo, sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub. It does have a lot of feathering, a lot of tiny feathering all over it. The whole entire word quick, the whole entire word brown, the whole entire word the, whole entire word lazy. So a lot of feathering going on. No spread, halo, sheen, no shade. Five seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get any. Last up is white lines. And I've started to get more confidence in this paper as a lot more inks have done well, but this one did not. Now, it did have a lot of bleed, but it did not touch the page underneath, except that scrubby, but, you know, that's a stupid thick area. All of that amount of bleed does leave for a lot of show through, even with the extra fine. The 1.1 has feathering. Smaller feathering than we got with the P. Berger, but there is still a lot of feathering that makes it look a little wavy along the edge of the letters, like the T in potato, the T in sweet, the whole word sweet, actually. There's no spread, halo, sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo, sheen, or shade, and six seconds to dry. So it performed well there, despite, you know, there's some bleed and show through that goes on. Medium is darker than the extra fine, about the same tone as the stub. It has a lot of feathering, again, that tiny feathering all over it, the entire word quick, the entire word the, the entire word over. No spread, halo, sheen, or shade, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, and we didn't get any color variation. So what do I think of Sailor Sweet Potato? The writing is much darker than what you tend to get in the swab. So it's another example of where swabs are a little misleading. I tend to use writing samples to really be able to see what an ink looks like. Now, with a lot of Sailor inks, the shading you get is very subtle, but it can be there. What pen and nib give the best writing experience with this ink? A Normal Flow Broad Pen puts down a very nice tone. It is very pleasant to look at, and that is what I prefer. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for watching.